what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? You're a horrible mother. You dush. I'm gonna call CPS. These are just some of the things a fourth grader, let him tell it, a fifth grader, told his mother because she told him to go to bed. What was the bed time? 10.30, fam. 10.30, he didn't like that. He was playing video games the whole time. He's playing this video game and he's having a conversation with her. They sound like some type of couple dispute. You know, like he's talking to her on the level that couples talk to each other. Dysfunctional, I might add. A toxic relationship, I might add. She said, I'm gonna tell your, uh, tell your father. And he told her that she acts like his father is her father. And then, she, then he said, she told him to turn the game off. He said, well, now I'm not turning it off now. And you brought it on yourself. You know, so she, she went to swinging on him. He called her, he was trying to, he was about to call her a prick. And he couldn't get it all the way out, but he was calling her a prick and she went to swinging on him. And that's when he threatened to call CPS. Fam, I've seen some disrespectful children in my lifetime. But this little dude is one of the worst. He is among the worst. Totally disrespectful. How did he get so far gone? His mama. I don't know how much time he spent with his daddy. His mama said, you know, when she suggested that he was blaming her for the breakup, in any event, the mom has no control whatsoever of him, like zero, and she's a nervous wreck. I submit that she brought it on herself. Fam, this is the result of trying to be your child's friend rather than their parent, mother, father. I know a number of women right now who have a difficult time talking to their sons because they raised their sons like they were miniature boyfriends allow them to argue with them, do whatever they want to do, not hold them accountable. Respect has never been on the table. I, the way I hear some of these boys, and I'm talking about black boys, you know, this was unheard of when I was growing up. You, know, you don't talk, you don't disrespect your mama. I don't care, I don't care. Hey, like Pac say, even though you was a crack fiend, mama, you always was a black queen, mama. You don't speak to your mama like that. Today, ooh man, it's different. It's way different. So, if you don't want to have a kid like Nathan, then I suggest that you raise a son instead of a friend. I told my kids, a few times when they were growing up. I'd rather be your daddy than your friend because you can get a friend anywhere. You can have a million friends. You can have only have one daddy. One. That's it. That's it. You got one daddy, period. Now you can have these variations and all this stuff all you want to, but I'm saying it's impossible to have more than one biological father. And that's me. So, I like my role. My role is unique. I'd rather 
be the bad guy from time to time and deny my children in order to make sure that they get the life lesson along the way. Because that's all we're doing. We're preparing our children to be self-sufficient and independent, productive human beings. And we have to be serious and deliberate about how we raise them because the way that we raise them to respond to different situations in life is the way that they're going to respond. So if they see us arguing between, they see their parents arguing uh, and can't get along and raising their voice every time they don't agree with somebody, that's the way they're going to behave, more than likely. If they see their parents swinging on each other, then more than likely they're going to swing on their spouse. Kids, children, they operate under a watch system. Whatever they watch you doing, more than likely that's what they're going to do. So you can say what you want to say, but if they see you behaving a certain way, that's the way they're going to behave. So this little dude ain't never had no consequences, you can tell. And when he, there were consequences, there wasn't consistent consequences. Because sometimes you would get these parents that, okay, they, they've given their kids so much latitude, so much wiggle room to mess up and do whatever they want to do, just be disrespectful and all this. And then they get to, to the end of their rope and they just snap and go crazy and start hitting them and beating them and stuff. And right after that, they start kissing all over them and, and praying and, you know, asking for forgiveness and, and then trying to give them something to make up for what they had just done. And then they start letting them get away with other stuff stuff and not holding them accountable. They'll punish them and not go through with the full punishment term. This is not how real life works. In real life, there are consequences to your actions. If you talk in a disrespectful manner to a stranger, then you might experience conflict. If you raise your hand to hit somebody, you're probably going to get hit back a shot and killed. If you are disruptive in the classroom, you're going to find yourself being removed from the classroom. If you are disobedient at home, then you'll probably be disobedient in public and that disobedience can get you put in jail. That you know, creating a public disturbance is what I'm really saying. That can get you put in jail, right? If you're disruptive at home, you do that in public, you can end up in jail. So there's a myriad of things, consequences that can happen when there are no, when a child is not held responsible for their actions. And this could, this kid, you can tell, have not been held responsible for his actions Consistently. Again, consistency is the key, fam. Kids got to understand that you mean what you say. And if you punish them, you got to go through with the punishment. Now, you can make them earn back their privileges. Maybe you said, okay, you're going to be punished for 30 days. But because, you know, you've seen that because of their behavior, it's dramatically improved. And uh, maybe they've done some extra things around the house or something to earn some extra points or whatever. And, you know, you decided, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and shave about five days off. Or you might decide I'm going to shave 10 days off. Whatever you think is fair. You did? So I'm not saying you shouldn't have room for more flexibility. There should always be room for more flexibility. But you have to be consistent. And most of these parents are not consistent. I have never not disciplined my child because I feared that they would call CPS. I've never been concerned about CPS. 
when raising my children. Never, not once. This woman was concerned. This kid was like, CPS, getting the number. I'm going to call CPS. Yes, yeah, CPS. And then she started plea bargaining. Well, I, you know, see, you caused that. You made me and da da da. And, you know, yeah, you're not going to have, you call CPS, you're not going to have a mother. And then you know, he's like, man, nah, it was like, Psh, nah, nah, well, stop hitting me. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you, you can't communicate. You don't know how to communicate without hitting. You're not supposed to hit your child and all this stuff. You know, so it starts at home. It starts with the mother first. It starts with the parent first. I don't know what kind of type of upbringing that he's getting when he's around, around his father, but I can tell you just listening to his mother that the mother is the problem in the home that he's in that home. The mother is the first problem. A lot of times, these parents, they drop the ball, they don't do what they're supposed to do, and they lose control, and they try to ring it back in. It ain't even in them to ring it back in. It ain't even in their character to ring it back in. So once you lose control, control is gone. It's gone forever. All you can do is hope and pray that your child develops a conscious and a and, and, and some damn common sense and some respect for you. But once you lose it, it's almost impossible to regain. That is a hell of a gamble. If I were you, I wouldn't take it. No more talk. What, what the talking about?